Hey everybody, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World Electronics. I am working on my alarm system. I went and got some connecting wire and I took the the battery that I showed you in a previous video, one of my modem batteries, which it looks like this originally, apart. And what I did is simply separated the batteries carefully, clipped the wires off, because I can't find, I have some sockets for 18650s, I can't find it this time. I bought them long ago. So I got one battery right here, and I am very surprised. I bought these, I don't know when, I bought them so long ago. Let me see, you can probably see the voltage when I hook this up. I'm incredibly amazed that the, um, the battery voltage, make sure I don't short it together, is, uh, where is it now? 3.2 volts. 3.26 volts. I am quite amazed after sitting for all this time. It's not exactly full, but it's really impressive for sitting around for so long. So now what I'm going to do is get my soldering iron heated up, and I'm going to solder the battery leads to my little charging device here. And I'm going to solder them directly on. Eventually, I want to have a replaceable socket so I can pop 18650s in and out as I as I just please. But this should this should last, you know, just fine for years to come. So my first thing is to get a battery going and get it charging. So I'm going to get that soldering iron heated up. Okay, it smells like at least my iron is hot. This is going to be some tricky work because I can't really see very well in here. The I've got a magnifier. I don't know if that's in the camera or not. And I've got to be careful. So there's battery plus. I'm going to put the plus on here first. I got to be careful not to short this thing out either. Um, I want to bend that. Working with a live 18650 is just no joke. That's why I'm incredibly slow and careful here, like never before. You do not want to short together a live 18650. I don't want to have fireworks in my house right now. Not today. Not unintentionally. So this is the hairiest part of the job. Get that through there. I really don't want to have a poof. Okay, this side might go better. Get that soldered. I definitely need more light in here. It's uh, cold and dark and yucky in the electronics shop today, so I'm inside. Okay, that's on there. Now, the only way to know the status of this thing is to get some power going in. So I'm going to cut a little bit of uh, wire for the plus and minus. Um, I'm not going to go crazy on how long I cut it. This is going to be a small system and I'm going to have the solar panels connected to that so they'll come into the box later. All right, let me get these stripped and I'll get these prepared. Okay, now I have the battery charger on. So there's in plus minus, you can also use USB. And I've got the battery plus and minus hooked up. So I'm gonna flip on my power supply it's USB, right? We want 5 volts. That's a USB charging controller. And let's see what happens here. Hopefully, we'll have light. Oh yeah. There it is. We've got light. The charger is working. Can you see that? The little charging device is working. So it is charging, and our 
Power supply is showing just under an amp, 0 0.99, which is precisely what it's meant to take. It's exactly what it was supposed to draw. So 5 volt, 0 0.99 amps, and uh, we're looking good. All right, I'm going to let that charge for a while and charge that battery up just to see how this little guy works out for us. And then I'll come back for the next phase. Well, the battery's charging. I'm going to solder those tiny, tiny, tiny little wires on there. I won't be able to do that on camera because they're so little. Okay, I got my um, plus output and ground on there. Really tiny wires. This is a very tiny device. So just briefly testing this. I hope that you'll be able to see. I'm just holding this on here to the power supply. It's a momentary and boy you only need to be like eighth of an inch to a quarter inch to that thing. That is sensitive. I cannot believe it. it's not even a touch. It doesn't have to be touched. Let me jumper this in here. So there's the device. Check this out. Let me get some light in here so you can see what I got going on. I don't even have to touch it. I just have to come close. Wow, how since how far is that? Wow. Quarter inch. I don't have to touch it. That is mega sensitive. Quarter inch away and it works. This is exciting. Now this is what I've been wanting to do. Let me try. Because the idea is going to be to take a wire, a long fence wire. So let me take a lead here. There, there it is. I got it. To where I can, I got it. I finally got it to where I can touch the wire. It's working. Look, guys, it's working. Look at that. I can touch the wire. <laughs> this is exciting. This is so cool. I touched the wire, I'm triggering the alarm. Look at that. A long distance wire. Just coming near the wire, I'm triggering that alarm. Look at that. That is so cool. Look at this, guys. This is so sensitive if I even touch the, the helping hands. Look at that. So the helping hands is holding the wire, which is by the capacitive plate. Look at that. I don't even have to touch it. I come close to it. This is mega sensitive, this circuit. This is incredible. Let me explain why I'm so excited about this. Um, I have a fence around the property, and I have alarms out there, but I want more. I want to have redundancy, and I want to have a mess of wires, a mess of alarms, each connected to a short span of wire around the property, each one with its own uh, alarm and lights, so that wherever somebody touches I'm gonna to know where they are precisely and I want something that's easier rather than my home built circuits and cheaper doing it in the electronics lab is fun and all that but having a, a 20 30 cent chip to do the job for me is really cool and because I can use a wire and because it's so sensitive that even if someone is wearing gloves, they're not going to be able to defeat this. Um, clothing, gloves, no matter what, you're not going to be able to defeat this because I can change the sensitivity by changing the capacitor on here. That is exactly what I was hoping for, and that's why I'm so excited. If a person comes near the wire on our fence, they're going to trigger the alarm. They don't even have to touch it. And if they've got gloves on or some kind of protection to try to rip through, they're still going to trigger it. Just their nearness to it is going to trigger it because I can change the sensitivity, which is, that's why I'm so excited. Um, as far as somebody trying to bash through or cut through, I've got plans for that too. But that's a video for another day. The battery is nearing its completion here, the charge. And the device is doing its job. It's reducing the current being drawn as the battery gets near a full charge. So what I have here, the 555 timer circuit, 
when you apply power there's a 0 to 10 second time delay and then it triggers the relay so there's your power LED and there's your relay LED can you see them on there so I'm gonna reset power when I first turn on power the power LED comes on and then it triggers the relay turning on the relay this is uh, normally I gotta check these out there's common normally closed and normally open it took me a while to figure out what pins are what because it says CB and CK on here this was made in China so I'm not sure what's what I can change the time delay on this by increasing the capacitor size this is actually opposite of what I really want what I'd really like is to reverse the operation of this so when you first apply power the relay is engaged turning on the alarm and then disengaging and going into idle mode so this is opposite of how I want I can still use it as is but I wonder how hard it would be to reverse the wiring on that relay there's a normally open and a normally closed so I could still use it as is but it's going to use more power once it's been triggered until somebody goes and resets the system turning off the power to the device so I can use it when we first set it up I'm gonna want the delay to be a couple minutes screaming alarm screaming alarm relay triggers disconnecting the alarm and there it sits until I come and reset the system or even better self resetting system so if somebody triggers the alarm again it'll come back so I need to work on this circuit that's pretty much going to be the end of today I have I'm very pleased with what I've got so far is the capacitive touch sensor is incredibly sensitive and working well very very happy with that I have my battery charging circuit which is working well I'm very pleased with that so this is what's going to power the whole system right here the solar panel when it arrives will connect to here so anytime the sun's shining we'll be charging the battery during the day plenty of power to do that during the daytime that's going to be awesome I won't ever have to worry about this battery running down because the power consumption of these circuits is so low at idle that it'll never wear this out in a week of use so I'm very pleased with with this part so far and this I've got to work on so I've got to give this some thought and modify it so that it's a self resetting system after two minutes of the alarm screaming I want it to reset itself rather than sitting here burning extra power it hurt let's go ahead and check out the alarm part of the circuit it's the only thing we haven't checked yet tonight. Oh, that's not loud. All right, I'm going to need a different alarm. It definitely is going to send a sound, but that's not going to be loud enough. Small correction. This thing is killer. I was testing it at 5 volts. Okay. Oh, my ears. That's 7. Oh, that hurts. 8. Anyway, turn it back down. Oh, that hurts. Okay, those are good. <laughs> I just, I remember somebody commented in uh, reviews that um, they're okay at three volts, they're possible, and at a higher voltage, they're stronger and stronger. Wow, I can't imagine 24 volts. I only got up to like eight or 10. That's too high for me. The idea is, I don't have the LEDs, they're on the way. The idea is, once the alarm is triggered, this guy is going to turn on, once, once the
somebody touches a fence wire, it's going to trigger this guy starting a timing circuit to turn on an alarm and an LED, keeping them on for a period of time until this resets, shutting it off. The idea is I'm going to have multiple wire alarms around the perimeter and the audio plus the flashing lights are going to tell me precisely where the intruder or animal is in my entire perimeter. So that's awesome. So we'll have a localized pinpoint system, a grid system, so to say. Well, that's it guys for tonight. I'm going to be messing with this circuit and customizing it in another video. And then in another video after that, we'll be putting this all together once the rest of my parts come in. And, uh, and I get this figured out, how I'm going to work this. I know it's going to work out for me. I've got to do some modifications. I'll be doing that on video, so stay tuned. But uh, I'm pretty happy with what I've got so far. Especially, especially the fence alarm. That is so awesome. So sensitive. Well, guys, please do like this video. And leave a comment below. Tell me your thoughts. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, I'll see you later.